Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at logarithms. This is really going to be an introduction to logarithms. So we're going to look at what logarithms mean, how we use them, and just how we generally approach these sorts of questions that you can see on the screen at the moment. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start by having a look at this problem on the screen, and it's a nice and easy one, but grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at this introduction to logarithms. So something like this, 2 to the power of x equals 8. This isn't built to be particularly difficult, hopefully you can spot here that 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8, or in other words, 2 times 2 times 2. And we could write that, we could write 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now when it comes to logarithms, there is another way of writing this. Now just like when we're looking at these powers here, we know that this number here, this 2, is called the base number. And that's going to apply when we look at a logarithm. Now what we say for a logarithm, and this is going to mean exactly the same thing, it's just a different way of writing it. We're going to say that log with a base of 2, just like here we've got our base number of 2. What log with a base of 2 gives us the answer 8? So log base 2 of 8. And we might say that equals x or something, or we're trying to find out what that answer is. So what power of 2 gives us the answer 8? And we know that the answer is 3. Okay, we've just worked that out. And that would be the answer there. If we wrote log base 2 of 8, our answer would be 3. So all that this means here is essentially what power of 2, what power of 2 is equal to 8? There we go. And that is really the fundamentals here behind logarithms. And as long as we can understand that concept, we can look at it in all different types of ways. But all we're going to be looking at here is basically what powers of certain numbers equal particular answers and sort of mixing those and, and sort of rearranging that in certain ways. Now we could write this as a sort of, not as a, not as a formula, but we could write this obviously with letters rather than having the numbers here and looking at how obviously we rearrange this. So we could say that log base of, and let's just call it A, with this letter B here, is equal to X, and what that means in terms of a power. And that means that, and again, the base of A is our main number here, or in this term, obviously writing the letter at the moment, but A to the power of X equals B. And that there is obviously something pretty key to write down, because that's how we're going to be sort of writing these and writing them in sort of different ways as we move through this video. But obviously just thinking about this logically, log base 2 just means the number 2 to the power of something gives us this answer here. Okay, So what power of 2 gives us the answer 8? And that power there is 3. So let's think about a different example before we move on. I could say something like this, obviously rather, writing, rather than writing it as a power, we could say log, and let's go for base 3 this time. So what power of 3 gives us the answer 9? So we'll go log base 3 of 9 equals x. And I might ask you here to find the value of x. So if we've got this little problem in front of us, we would say, okay, well, 3 to the power of something, and we've got obviously got the letter x there, is equal to 9. So what power of 3 gives us the answer 9? And hopefully that's nice and easy for you to spot. We know that it's 3 squared that equals 9. So we would say x equals 2. Or we could say, you know, log base 3 of 9 equals 2. But that's really the fundamentals here behind what logs mean and how we're going to use them. We're going to have a look at a couple of different examples here, but obviously make sure you've made some good notes on that and you've got that all written down. And let's move on to a different type of problem. Okay, so what I've done here is I've kept our little conversion at the top. So I've written here log base a of b equals x is another way of writing a to the power of x equals b. Just in case, obviously, you've not got that written down, it's always worth having that written down when you're starting off with logs. So we've got two questions here. The first one says, find the value of x such that log base x of 125 is equal to 3. So this time we don't know the base number. Okay, and we've got an x in place of that base number. So what we've got here, we've got well, x to the power of something is going to equal 125. And this time it's given us that power. It's given us the power of 3. So we've got x to the power of 3 equals 125. 
and then we can just solve the problem from there. Now you might already know that in your head, but obviously what, if we, what do we need to do to reverse a cube? Well, we would have to cube root both sides. So in order to solve this problem, we would have x is gonna be equal to the cube root of 125. And some of these you might know in your head, but for the purpose of practice at the moment, we're just gonna work on reversing them. And the cube root of 125, x equals five. And there we go. So we would say log base five, 125 is equal to three, because five to the power of three is 125. And there's our first little problem there. And again, it's just about thinking about that slightly in reverse what we looked at a minute ago. So for the second one here, mixing it up again, we've got find the value of x such that log base five of x is minus three. So this time we don't know the answer. We've got a log, we've got a base of five, so our base number is five. So we have five to the power of, and we've been given the power, minus three. But we don't know the answer, so we've just got to work this one out. So five to the power of minus three is equal to x. Now, as I said again, we've got a lot of indices work in this, and this time we've got some negative and fractional potential indices coming in. So obviously you need to make sure you're nice and clued upon that. Again, I'll link the video to those in the description, but you do need to make sure you're happy using your negative indices in these as well. So a power of minus three. Now we know that negative powers will do the reciprocal, so that's gonna flip that over. So we could flip it over to start with. Let's have a look, so that'd be one over five. And then we also have the three in there, so both of those are gonna to need to be cubed. So we can work this one out. One cubed stays as one, and then five cubed, as we've already worked out from above, is 125. And there we go, five to the power of negative three would give us one over 125, and that would be our final answer there to finish that one off. But as you can see, obviously, it doesn't matter which piece we take away, we treat them all in the same way, and it's just about being comfortable using your powers and yeah, you know, your negative powers as well. So let's have a look at one more question before you have a go. Okay, so something a little trickier here. We've got find the value of x such that log base four of a one over 64 is equal to x, or in other words, what power of four gives us one over 64? And we've already met one similar to this because in the last one we got an answer that was one over 125, and that's very similar to this answer of one over 64. But let's write this out. So we have the base of four, so four is our base number. Four to the power of something, which is our x this time, is equal to one over 64. So we know from the last one, again, obviously, depending on how comfortable you are with your negative indices, we know that in order for it to be a one over as the answer, it's gonna to have to be a negative power. So we already know part of the power here. We know it's gonna be four to the power of minus something. And we need to get to one over 64. So what power gets us from 4 to 64? Well, we can work that out just down below. Let's have a look. 4 times 4 is 16. And if we times that by 4 again, which isn't the nicest one to do in your head, but 16 times 2 is 32. We'll double that again, we'll times it by 4, and that gets us to 64. So it's 4 times 4 times 4, or in other words, 4 cubed. So it's going to be 4 to the power of minus 3. So there we go. We know four to the power of minus three gives us one over 64. So we could say log base four of one over 64 is equal to negative three, the power there. Or in other words, x equals negative three. And there we go, there's our final answer. So that's all that this means when we're looking at logs, okay? So it's just about looking at the, the, the way that the log is written and reading it just like we recognized before. Log base, and then we have our base number, then it gives us our answer, one over 64, is equal to what power, or in other words, what power of four gets us one over 64, okay? So as long as you read it like that and sort of understand the way that that writing translates to that wording, you should be absolutely fine working through some of these problems. But anyway, here's a couple of questions for you to have a go at, and we'll go over all the answers in a sec. Let's have a look at those. Okay, so there's four questions here, so pause the video, have a go at all of these, and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so the first one here, let's see then. So we have log base two, so we have a base number of two, and it's gonna to be to the power of x, we don't know what the power is, but it's gonna equal 32. We just need to figure out what that power is. So two times two is four, times two again is eight, times two again is 16, and times two again is 32, so that was five times. So here it's two to the power of five that equals 32. So here, x equals five. Now you might have gone in a different order here, but I'm going to go down to the one below. So for the next one, find the value of x such that log base 6 of x equals negative 2. 
So here we have a base of 6. We don't know what the answer is going to be, but we know the power is going to be minus 2. And that's going to equal x. This is one of the ones where we can just work it out straight away. So that power of minus 2, the negative is going to flip it over, and the 2 is going to square that. So that's going to be, and let's write this out, x is going to equal, flip it over, so it's going to be 1 over, and square it, 36. So 1 over 36 is our answer for that one. Okay, up to the top right, log base x, 64, equals 3. So we don't know the base this time, we've got x to the power of, we know the power, 3, and that's got to equal 64. So there we go, either you might know this one in your head, otherwise we're just going to have to reverse that and do the cube root, so we need to get the cube root of 64. Now hopefully we can recognise that, we know in our cube numbers, but the cube root of 64 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 again is 32, and we've had that come up in slightly in one of our other questions where we had 1 over 64. So there we go, we've got x equals 4, 4 cubed is 64. And then on to our last one, we've got log base 3, so 3 to the power of, we've not got the power, 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 81. So we know it's going to be a negative power as it's now a 1 over, we've got a reciprocal going on. So we know that our power is going to be negative and we just need to figure out what that power actually is. So let's work this out. 3 times 3 is 9, so that's not squared. Times 3 again would be cubed, that gets 27. And it's times 3 again to get to 81, so that would be the power of 4. So as it's been flipped over, it's going to be the power of negative 4. So there we go, there's our answers. x is 5 for the first one, x is 1 over 36 for the second one, x is 4 for that top right, and x is negative 4 for this one on the bottom right. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of logarithms. Um, we're going to have a look at a couple of tiny little questions here where we might involve a calculator as well just before we finish. Nice quick one to finish on, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so this question here will show you how obviously we can use logarithms to actually solve some of these indices problems. So we've got here, find giving your answer three significant figures, the value of x for which 5 to the power of something equals 10. Now this is quite nice and this will show you why logarithms are so useful because we can actually just type these in straight into the calculator but obviously it does mean that we have to know how to write this power as a logarithm. Now if we write it out, so we're going to have log, there we go, and then we need to put our base number in. So here we've got our base number of 5, so log base 5 and our answer is 10. So what power of 5 gives us 10? Now you can type this straight into your calculator and we'll be able to get our answer straight away. So if you have a look on your calculator, and everyone has different calculators, so you can need to find your button, but there is going to be a button on your calculator. I'm using a Casio ClassWiz, which again I really recommend, and I'll link that in the description, but just underneath the on button, or somewhere on your calculator, there's a little button that looks like this, and it normally looks like log, and it has like a little coloured in square, and then a little open square. And if you can find that button, you'll be able to do these no problem. So find that button, press that, we get 5 in your little base square, and then 10 in your larger open square there, and type that in, and let's have a look, we get the answer, and I get on my calculator, 1.4306765588, which again, if we give that to three significant figures, chop it after the three, and we get 1.43 as our answer. And there we go, it's as easy as that. And you can even test that out if you want. You can press 5 to the power of and then put the answer in and you will get the answer 10, obviously, if you don't put the rounded answer in, but you put the original one in. So it's quite nice to test that out as well. So it just goes to show how you can actually use these to solve these harder number pro indice problems. But let's have a look at a couple of little questions on this for you to have a go at just before we finish. Let's have a look at those now. Okay, so our last two questions, these hopefully shouldn't take you too long. Have a go at putting these into your calculator. We've got what power of 5 gives you 8 for the first one, and what power of 3 gives you 14 for the second one, and again, giving those to three significant figures. So pause the video, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay then, so for this first one, we've got a base of 5 there. So let's have a look. We've got log with a base of 5, and what gives us the answer? 8. And if we type that into the calculator, I'm going to do this along, and we get the answer 1.292029674. And if we round that to three significant figures, we get 1.29 as our final answer. Moving on to our second one, 
we have log base three. So what base of three, here we go, gives us the answer 14, or what power of three gives us the answer 14. So log base three with an answer of 14, and we get the answer here. Might just be able to fit this in. 2.4021735053. And again, giving that to three significant figures, 2.40. Not forgetting to put that zero in there to express that third significant figure. There we go, and there's our final answer. Okay, so that finishes part one on our introduction to logarithms. In part two, we're going to have a look at some of the other rules involved here, and then we're going to move on to some sometimes a lot of much harder questions on solving equations or logarithmic equations in our, some of our final parts here. But hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.